Well, as we get started with our with our August monthly meeting, uh, I am recording this program for uh, later viewing for people that may not be able to attend today. I'm Eric Kalanick. I'm the executive director of the History Center, joined by Chris Yoder, who will be our uh, leading us through this history mystery adventure, and Anna uh, Manubo, one of our interns this summer, uh, will be uh, helping to moderate and, and track our questions. Uh, as you have questions, uh, and you'll definitely have some questions and some responses as we get into the slideshow, feel free to type those into the chat, or you can also <coughs> raise your hand, either using the raise hand button or using uh, just physically raising your hand in the video, and we'll try to call on you uh, as we get through that. Well, if this is a work in progress, we're going to try a couple of different things out, but we do hope for this to be interactive and get some different responses from you as we go along. Thank you to our sponsors, Bill Hess and Mike Madrin, uh, who have uh, supported uh, many of our programs this summer, uh, including this one. So thank you, Bill Hess and Mike Madrin for, for that. Uh, the mission of the Saugatuck Douglas History Center is to preserve local history and inspire learning to inform and improve our community. If you're coming to us on a long way, uh, you can really appreciate uh, that view of the beautiful Douglas Schoolhouse there and our exhibit opening from Stories of Summer last summer. <clears throat> I also want to acknowledge and give credit to uh, the different uh, grantors who have supported the History Center. Uh, the History Center is supported by the Michigan Council for the Arts and Cultural Affairs and National Endowment for the Arts. We've also received a uh, Hope Grant from Michigan Humanities and the National Endowment for the Humanities and are supported by the Alden County Community Foundation as well. Uh, most of all, I want to thank our supporting members. Uh, if you are a member, thank you. Uh, you make these programs possible. Uh, if you'd like to make a donation to support our work and programming or become a, a member, <coughs> please visit our website. I have a few announcements here at our August meeting. Uh, we've had several of our uh, members and indeed a founder, our first president, Michael Sweeney, uh, passed away this past month. Uh, our newsletter that went out just this past week um, gives acknowledgement and shares some information about uh, uh, some of uh, these people important in the life of the historical society and the History Center that it's become. Uh, so I wanted to acknowledge uh, some of these individuals today. Michael Sweeney, Arnie Schaefer, Art Lane, and Stubb Lewis. And uh, in the newspaper, uh, the newspaper today, we also saw the news of our <coughs> uh, passing. Uh, and so I wanted to acknowledge that as well. Uh, if you've seen the paper this week, uh, you've also seen the story about the History Center's efforts to preserve uh, the Demarest fishing shanty, uh, which is on Water Street right on the Kalamazoo River. Uh, we have some good news to report that there's some movement uh, in uh, coming up with some plans uh, to move the building uh, to uh, safer ground and to be able to potentially restore that. Very preliminary at this point. Uh, but I, uh, stay tuned for more information. And uh, if this is something that interests you, please feel free to reach out to me uh, and we can talk more about uh, the effort and some of, the, uh, some of what that entails and some of the vision for this as well. All right. I'm going to hand the program over <coughs> to Chris Yoder, uh, who has our Jack Sheridan slide share, our slideshow history mystery ready to go. <coughs> Let him say a few words about the background of this and uh, take it away. Thank you, Eric. As, as many of you know, Jack Sheridan is the History Center photo historian and expert. He's assembled, managed, and analyzed thousands of local photographs over the years. The history mystery feature was developed uh, by Jack for placement as a weekly feature in the commercial record newspaper. It started in May of 2004 and ran for 324 issues. 
these can all be found on the History Center webpage under the Research and Collections link uh, on the webpage. Today I have 31 new history mysteries that Jack's put together for us. Um, unfortunately, as Eric says, he's going to be out of town today, so you've got a second string uh, producer tonight, presenter tonight. Uh, each image uh, will be presented twice, once with a question or a clue about the item being portrayed, and then a second time it will be shown with the answer that Jack has to that question. Uh, if any of you wish to make a guess uh, and answer the question, use your chat feature, which is at the center of the screen at your bottom. You should be able to see a chat button. And that chat will uh, appear uh, and we can get a feel for how many people guessed right or if anybody guessed at all on an item. Um, and now we'll proceed into the first image. I think. There we go. Let me move my gallery out of the way so I can read. Uh, many structures have been preserved uh, today that appear in this 1895 image of Saugatuck taken from Mount Baldhead. Uh, it was uh, a crop of a larger panoramic photo. Oh, I should be back. I shouldn't give you the answers first. They, they were on the second screen. Uh, it was cropped at the, and it represents the south end of the city of Saugatuck. And the challenge, if you hadn't been shown the answer already by a, a, an erring finger push, pusher, uh, is there are three structures here at least that still exist today and can you name them? And at this point, if you had answers, you go down to your chat, you click on the chat and you give any answers that you might have. But uh, since I already cheated a bit and gave you the answers, they're the ones that are represented with the stars. That of course is the Congregational Church up on the hill. The next one, represents uh, the women's club, which at that time was the home of the Bruckman family. It was later donated to the women's club. Oh. It was later donated to become the women's club front building. And the other is a structure known as the White House, which uh, uh, is not the White House that is down on Water Street today, but that was the name of what now is Lucy's Restaurant. And at one point, it was the home of B. Finch, who was a well-known local until the time of her death. We'll go to the next picture. The Air Dome Theater was located on Water and Main Street. And today it's it was next to today's Wicks Park. The river was just behind the screen. And the question is, what years uh, was this theater in existence? And of course, if you have a guess, just use the chat button and uh, share it with us. The answer is 1920 and 21. Uh, where this theater was located, if you go from the middle of the town square down Main Street toward the river, uh, past the uh, Christian Science Church on the left, you would run into the area in which this theater uh, was, was located. You see the piano there? They played movies. At this time, it was silent film, so it was always accompanied with a musical accompaniment. They also had some live programs that would be presented here. History 1916, parties and parades have always been a hit here in Saugatuck. And uh, the writing on the thing said, Bob Moore makes a little hay. Do you recognize the street corner in which this parade is located? Let me give you all a second. 
This is where the traffic light is located today, where water comes up into Butler. And of course, in back is today's city hall. History 1914, this was a big deal. The present day Peterson Preserve is to the right. What is all this move, earth moving about? So you notice the trestle in back, that was built for the uh, inner urban because the initial electronic power to uh, generate the movement of the inner urban was not sufficient to go down and then back up the hill that uh, still exists on North Avenue, North Street today. You know, North dips down from Blue Star and reaches the bottom and then starts backing, going back up uh, until it gets to Holland Street. Uh, that was too much of a slope. Uh, for the power that was available, the electric power that ran the inner urban to do the job of getting it there. So this trellis that was in back uh, was built to facilitate the movement. Uh, in 1914, more electric power was, was available and a greater cap capability existed for movement of the inner urban's cars. So what they did is they built a new route down to the bottom and then up slightly from the dip at the bottom of uh, north. And then the walking path that you can still see today, which exists slightly to the west of the intersection with Maple Street and north, uh, was constructed to be the new track bed, the new rail bed for the interurban and the trellises in the background were removed. This was a big thing as far as the progress of the inner urban. The inner urban did a 360 here. Where was the photographer standing? Can anybody guess? I'll give you a minute. They were standing on the second floor porch of the Butler Hotel to take this picture. And the building in the back at the right is part of what was then the train depot, uh, train station in Saugatuck for the interurban. This gentleman was an icon of the community prominent businessman, uh, very involved in all local activities. He was named for the doctor that delivered him. Does anyone know his name? His name was Doc Anderson Heath, and he was the husband of Noted Saugatuck historian, May Francis Heath. Uh, in the city square, there is a water fountain that now has a plaque commemorating the 50th anniversary of the death of May Heath, a brass plaque on that water fountain. Uh, the story goes that she had that water fountain placed there so Doc would have some place to wet his whistle on the way home from his boat rental, as opposed to just stopping in the local tavern on that route. Here's a picture of the Saugatuck fireman from 1946. The man in front with his arm crossed was a valuable village jack of all trades. His first name was Harry and his last name was question mark. Does anyone know? 
One, one thing which appeared, appealed to Jack Sheridan about this picture was the sign advertising the turkey shoot in Douglas. Uh, does anyone in our audience know anything about the turkey shoot? We'd learn, love to learn more. His name was Harry Newman. And Jack Sheridan considers him one of his heroes growing up as he could do and did do just about everything. He was the fire chief, the water commissioner, past master of the Masonic Lodge, very active in just about uh, everything uh, to do with the city. Uh, in his obituary, the commercial record editor reported a conversation of his in which he denied the oft-repeated statement that the Saugatuck streets roll up for the winter. Well, he said, no, we just stand them on edge and use them as snow fences. Interestingly enough, if you go to the Saugatuck History Center webpage and you enter a search for the name Sylvia Booth, B-O-O-T-H, you'll see her article about Harry's great-grandfather. Richard B. Newham, who first came to Saugatuck. He had been born the same day and within an hour of Queen Victoria of England. He got into some suspected legal difficulty in England and disappeared to America, where he changed his name from William Newham to Richard B. Sylvia is the descendant of one of his daughters who remained in England. Richard B. was the grandfather of Harry Newman. Nineteen sixteen, showing off his new rig. Bob Moore again at the wheel, and the same vehicle that appears from that earlier picture with the cows. Maynard's brother. Others are in the back, and the Morrison home is in the background. We'll talk about the Morrison home a little later. And it's next door to a photographer's studio. This is on the Culver Street side of the corner with Butler Street. The question is, name the dog. Can anybody name the dog? Well, the answer is Buster, and it's not on this picture, but we have other pictures, according to Jack, which feature that animal, and the dog's name was Buster. Fourth of July, 1907, a parade in downtown. The schoolhouse is next to a church, and a general store is visible down the road. Where is this located? Does anyone know? It's downtown Ganges. Is anyone familiar with Ganges enough to say if either of these two structures still exist today? I, I'm not. But if you are, just raise your hand and uh, or indicate in some other manner. Use the chat. Here's a history question showing a picture of a dining room uh, circa 1951. What was its name then and what is its name now? Does anyone know? Do you recognize the building or the ceiling? The ceiling top. Well, then it was called the Douglas Dinette, and now it is located where the Matt Balmer's Everyday People Cafe uh, is located.
This is one of the many water taxis that ran from Saugatuck and Douglas to the lake. Then the Oval Beach Road was built and that put most of these folk out of business. Does anyone know what year the road to the Oval Beach was constructed? Do I have an answer? 1936. To the left, you'll notice a boxcar. Uh, so they were bringing freight all the way downtown uh, on the line that carried the, the uh, interurban. Uh, this village hall was totally remodeled in 1920. Does anyone know the famous painter who designed the building as it looks today? See a uh, raise of hands. Let's see. No. Nope. It was Carl Herman. Uh, he was an architect from Chicago and a local artist. He built a house known as the Chalet that still exists on Pleasant Street, directly south of Kima. He also helped redesign Kima itself for the new 1930s vintage occupants, the Springer family. About 1936, Harry Newman, the fire chief, was posing beneath the new clock in the fire truck. And Jack's question was, who are the women on the bench? Well, the answer is that remains a history mystery. We don't know. To, Eric, did you have something? Things, Chris, yeah, two things. One, I, it's great you can really see the the changes in the building between from the from the fire station to the the Carl Horman redesign remodel uh, in this photo. So I think that's a great what a great pair to be able to see those. Uh, together. Uh, there was a comment in the chat that showed up from uh, Lynn Ripley, thank you very much, uh, that shared that the Ganji School was torn down in 1951. Well, oh, great. Thank you so much, Lynn, for that information. The, the school building that was replaced it was uh, the one that's there now that's uh, become an annex to the Methodist Church. Well, that's great. I'll tell Jack. 1951 for school. It might be 52. I'm, I, it, between, it was between kin kindergarten and first grade. <laughs> Me. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. Great, thank you. Great, thank you. Well, here's a picture of the Michigan Railway Station, which was the station there at the end of uh, Butler, in front of the Butler uh, Hotel, uh, where some people with show novels, and, and you see the building again that is there. It was a cold and snowy winter in 1909 and 1910. Was it worse than the winter of 2014? 
which was particularly cold? And the answer is no. Y14 was worse. Now you notice the building uh, in about 1933, the back part of the building, the south part of it, I understand from Jack, was separated and moved down to the river to become the clubhouse for the Saugatuck Yacht Club. Okay, when, when the interurban got increased electrical power and they did the other adjustments to include the taking out the trellis and rerouting, they were able to bring heavy liquid carrying freight cars into Saugatuck. And you can see some of them here with gasoline and oil uh, holding tanks. What is the location of this terminal where these tanks are shown in this picture? This is up at the corner of water where it runs into Lucy at the far north end of Water Street. There's a little park there today and a, and a beautiful, uh, very expensive looking house with round turrets and so forth. That, that's that area there. This farmhouse was built before, but close to the side site of an orchard. Now, some of us drive by it. Many of our friends are close by. And you name the location and the family that owned this farmhouse. Well, it would belong to the house family and it was located on the northwest corner of clearbrook holland and uh, 66 comes in there as well located near riverside cemetery uh, across the street and down the corner from it and the house family was a prominent fruit grower uh, in the area and they had a a soda product made as House's Cherry Mix. Does anyone recall House's Cherry Mix as a local drink? You go out on eBay and you might find some bottles or pop tops for sale that uh, still exist for that product. Nineteen eighteen, the Graham and Morton vessel, the Puritan, is offloaded, and the interurban is waiting for it. Can anyone identify the location? Holland, Michigan. Right, right, excellent. Where in Holland, Michigan? It's on the north side of uh, Lake Mactawa. Right. And in the distance, there's the Ottawa Beach Hotel. Right. And where the Points West restaurant was on that side as well, wasn't it? Exactly. Yes. Has anybody in the audience ever eaten at Points West? I know I have. I have too. It My sister to be... worked there. Oh, great. It used to be one of the places my grandparents would take us when we visited. Any others? Go to Port Points West. I think that was torn down, what, in the 70s or 60s? I think it went down in the 70s. Okay. It was a nice place to eat. It sure was. That's Mary Voss adding in. Thank you, Mary. When you worked there, uh, were you a waitress? It was my sister that worked there. Oh. Yeah, she was a waitress, right. Okay. A good 
restaurant like that, you normally would expect good tips. Did she make any money? <laughs> I think she did, yes. Oh, great. <laughs> I just might add, uh, the Ottawa Beach Hotel is in the background there. Mm -hmm. And that was in 1923. So this photo was definitely before that time. Okay. Before 1923. And from the looks of the dresses, it probably was more around the turn of the century. Great, great. Thank you, Mary. Well, now this structure was first built in 1904. And it was a cool place to stay. It had three names. Can anyone name the three, give the three names, or even one, two, or three, any of, any of the names? I expect you know at least one. You can feel free to unmute yourself if you want to share. Initially, it was the Leinendecker Inn, and then it was renamed the Holland, the, excuse me, the Hotel Saugatuck, which was... Yeah, yeah I thought, well, thought it was the Hotel Saugatuck. Yeah, we were, oh, not the Coral Gables? No? Now it's the Coral Gables. Oh, okay. I wouldn't have known it for the other two because I never was here. I remember but. Hotel Saugatuck. Yeah, but... Yeah. Okay. Back in 1904, it was the Leinendecker. And then oh, yeah. 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 Hotel there. Saugatuck in the middle. Yeah. And then what? And now Coral Gables. Okay, so those are the three. Yeah, I remember you yeah, really something. That Looks the same. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, like the, I like the sign of the uh, dock bar that you can see there in the right corner, I'm guessing. Oh, yeah. oh the dock, what does it say, dock sign? Dock, the dock, dock. yeah, that's, that's the corner of the pavilion, isn't it? Dock house. Looks yeah. like. Dock house? Okay, yeah, I see the fence that's still there. I think Jack <laughs> said that was a part that was sticking out from the side of the pavilion. Is that not true? The the balustrade or you mean the sign? That the dock the dock was part of uh, part of the pavilion structure. That's right. Yeah, that's mine. Uh, yeah. Anybody know? Mm -hmm. Okay, here's a vestige of the 1838 Wildcat Bank that was established. Excuse me? A Wildcat Bank that was established in Singapore. And where is that bank building today? Chris, uh, I believe that building is on Butler Street, and it's now the, um, it's, it, it's a gallery. Uh, they, they call it going out for business, and there may be a bookstore above it. Correct. Is that, is that correct? Uh, you, you, you got that one. It's the one the building immediately to the north of the Women's Club on Butler, and it is going out for business on the first floor and a bookstore on the second. Occasionally, you'll see one of these bills uh, for sale on eBay, and they go for a rather high fee. I think several people in town have some of have one of them framed and on their the wall of their. Very cool. Okay. I lost your picture, there, um, Chris. I'm not sure what happened when I hit participants. The picture was gone and now I'm seeing people. How can I get the picture back? Eric, any guy? I'm not sure, yeah. Uh, let's see, are, are you on an iPad, Mary? Uh, you... Actually, I'm on my iPhone. Okay, maybe try swiping. I don't know if you swipe left or right, if that will bring you back. Oh, I got it. Okay. Yep. okay, good, good. Okay, this is a picture from 1955. At this time, the corner building that you see on your right was called the Cabin Tavern. What's it called today? 
or what what did it later become? I don't know what it's called today. It's maybe one of you does. You recognize the corner, you recognize the building? What if I told you that building is yellow? Is that Kilwins? No. Kilwins? No. What? No. Is it the Christmas what? store? It was east of the sun. It came oh. east of the sun. What's it called today? Does anybody know? I, I don't. No, no, Christmas store. Christmas yeah. store? Is, is yeah. it the Christmas store? Good. Really I think. And then going down the street there on Butler, on the, on the west side of Butler, uh, Simon's, it was a, a lady's shop. Uh, and then the next building, I think, is where uh, Brandeis, uh, Brandis, uh, it's the old mm -hmm. building. And then uh, you can go down to the corner, and I guess the one on the far corner is uh, today's Pumpernickel, isn't it? Is that the right block? Yeah, it is. Okay. Uh, on the other corner, the opposite corner. The far corner, yeah. Yeah. Of course, I think Funk's, Funk's newsstand was in that block as well as the barber, at least in the 50s. Here is the history. Tower Marina. Note the tower, and there's an, a star on that tower. And that was the tower for which the marina was named. Uh, this is the first artist sketch of a proposal made in around 1964. And Jack says it turned out a little differently than this. But uh, can you identify the location? that this picture represented. It's on Ferry Street where it dips down uh, going toward the pool and the street crosses what's called Deer Creek. Creek is well. That creek is still there today. You can see where the where the star is there, and the creek runs into the water. And this is the area that uh, yeah. I, th I know there's some condos built up in this area as well. I th I think this is maybe the back cut to Saint to the, to the Catholic Church, maybe. But over here is the golf course. West Shore, what was West Shore, and there's the low point in the West Shore golf course where that little pond is. Now, this is a good view of the Stephen Morrison home that was built long before the rest of the buildings that are seen here. What was Morrison's primary business? that was located only a block away. Anyone know what Stephen Morrison did for a living? Does anyone know who Stephen Morrison was? I should know that. I'm sorry that I don't. I, what, did he build ships? Uh, he may have built some ships. I'd, I'd have to look it up. But he was uh, one of the earliest settlers in Saugatuck. He was a tanner, and his tannery was located just south of here at the far south end of Butler Street. Uh, Stephen Morrison was one of the earliest settlers of Saugatuck. He was the grandfather of our local historian, the much-loved May Francis Heath. He came to Saugatuck in, 19, in 1835, and in 1857, he built this home on the corner of Culver and Butler Street. The home later was owned by his daughter, who was May, he May Heath's aunt, 
who married a Leland and was known as the Leland Lodge. And with many of the historic structure in Saugatuck, its fate was and it burned down and is replaced now with other buildings and in little shops. The third shop, I think, is on that corner now. It burned down in 1978. Snug Harbor. You could get your gas or take a bus in circa 1955. It was the bus stop for the uh, Greyhound coming through town. It's a forced Snug Harbor. What replaced this building in the 1960s? The Shell gas pumps. Anybody know what came after Snug Harbor? I know there was a water softener business there. Right, right. It's a, it's the corner of Culver and Butler right there. It's is part of what was at one time the inner urban train stop right across the street from the, the Butler restaurant and the Butler hotel at that time. Culligan water softener folks built a new building around 1970, but that was replaced by the current building about 10 years ago. And now I, th I think there are a couple of little shops in that building on the corner. It was operated by uh, Ed and Babe Force. Now something that you all might recognize. This building was built by the village of Saugatuck in 1905. Why was it built? You know, looks a little differently today. Pump house, right? The pump pump house. Station. It, it's the pump house. It's the pump house. It was built to pump water uphill to a holding tank, which uh, provided gravity uh, fed pressure to supply the water for the, the mm -hmm. Yeah. Now it was expanded a little bit. Uh, it was uh, ready in, by 1964. Uh, it was ready for the wrecking ball. But you see, uh, the uh, northern half of the building has been added on, and that was done because they decided to add a generator to provide electricity to, for Saugatuck homes. Uh, that was not used for a long period. Uh, they soon uh, found another source of electrical power. Uh, what happened to this building in 1964? The village made a 20-year lease agreement with the Shorey family, and they restored it and used it as a summer home. Okay, after that period, uh, the lease was not renewed, and the History uh, Center Historical Society leased a dollar a year uh, and invested a lot in restoring and fixing it up, where it's our, now our pump house museum. Eric, are we still paying a dollar a year rental for the building? I know it's a, I know it's a low, very affordable rate, so uh, that sounds about right. <laughs> Is there an end on our, our rental or is it an open-ended lease? I think it's open-ended. Yeah, I think the city is happy to have us there. So we're, we're happy to be there. Great. And of course, now we've got Mike O'Connor maintaining a beautiful garden there. Uh, it's a wonderful spot and a, a lot of good effort has gone into that. Here's a Sinclair gas station that was once a 
prime Sagatuck landscape. Where was this gas station located? Who knows? Anybody want to jump in, unmute yourself, and shout out? It was located up at the corner where Holland Street comes into the Blue Star. Right now, it's a building that that contains the Alfieri Chiropractic Center. You know the corner now. Mm -hmm. Looks a little different. I don't think the necessarily as rounded as it is in this picture. A boat building up. This about 1890, the keel was laid and ribbed for this boat, which Jack, Jack said he thinks might have been the biggest boat built in Sultuck, but I couldn't, didn't write down the name. Where was this boat building going on? <laughs> Anyone know? Want to hazard a guess? Well, I was on water just south of the area in Wicks Park. In that panoramic view we kicked off the show with, you could see some boats down on the waterfront. It's about the area. Approximately where the Aerodome uh, Theater was later, but maybe just a touch to the, to the uh, south, to the north of that. But uh, that was in that area. Many boats were built in Saugatuck over a period of many years. History, the big pool. Here's some fun circa 1936. What caused the demise of the big pool? Ah, I think I know that one. Yes, ma'am. The road that was built to Oval Beach. Correct. That's, that is certainly one of the prime contributors. People could easily get to the Lake Michigan and didn't have to go to a pool, even if it did have slides and stuff. This big pool was built by Robert Marriott. And if you go to the History Center webpage, look under publications, then go into newsletter. If you look at the February and March 2011 issues of the History Center newsletter, you can see a two-part article by his daughter, Gail Marriott Wilkinson, who wrote about the family coming to Saugatuck, details of the building of the pool, and on how the pool came to an end, uh, much the financial ownership of the Marriott family. The pool is still there, but it's underground. It was filled in with dirt and it's located at the northeast corner of North and Elizabeth Street. Now that girl, young girl looks awful familiar. Can anybody identify her? Anybody recognize the young girl? I was hoping some might. It doesn't look like the pictures of Dale Marriott who is, had, by the way, since 20, uh, 2011, she's passed away, and I think she was in California or on the West Coast someplace. The visionary and the craftsman, circa 20, 2005, with a 150-year-old lifeboat. What is going on here? I mean, I could answer this okay. one. This is the, the restoration of the Francis lifeboat. Right, which is in a building all to itself right now beside the uh, schoolhouse. It's still there, right? You haven't moved it. It's still there. Still there. And it's open to the public. What hours? What it's hours do you have? From about, nine, from about nine until about six or seven o'clock at night. Most okay. days. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is Bob Johnson, who's one of the founding members of the Historical Society, along with uh, Charles uh, 
Lorenz and the, the late Mike Sweeney, uh, and Dick Lyons, who did a lot of the, uh, the woodwork, making up the plans on the restoration for the Francis boat. It's one of only two of these boats remaining in the U.S. It was designed by Joseph Franson of Boston. This boat arrived at the Saugatuck Lighthouse around 1854. And now another picture. It took three months to build and two hours to incinerate. What was the fateful date? Can anybody say the year? Oh, shoot. 19. No. 1963. No, I'm not sure. Close. It's just a big anniversary this this May. Six. It was May May sixth, 1960. With using the show of hands feature or just holding up your hand. Uh, how many in the audience were in town when the pavilion burned down? Any of you want to talk about it? What you saw, whether you saw it happen or Lynn, I saw your hand raised. Do you want to unmute yourself and tell what you remember? So um, I was a student at Fedville High School, but our bus was picking up from uh, Douglas at that time, the bus route I was on. And so we came on the school bus from school, just uh, so in the sort of mid afternoon when the burning happened and it was quite a shock because we didn't know about it before that. So uh, was the fire pretty much gone or, or was it still going pretty heavily? And you could still see the um, you could still see the uh, little fires burning on the other on the other side of the river. Uh huh. That had come from the ashes from the big fire. Oh goodness! Anyone else have any memories they'd like to offer about the fire? We drove over there the next day and took a number of slides. I'll have to look those up sometime. But uh, and Mary husband, Boss, thank you. Yeah. yeah, my husband had just gotten a new camera, and so he was busy taking some pictures of the ashes. That was very sad. How many of you might have gone to some of the activities at the pavilion? Anybody want to talk about some of them? I saw the Ten Commandments move there. Well, that I saw Bell Book and Candle, the movie there, with uh, Jamie Stewart and Kim Novak and Ernie Kovacs and Hermione Gingold and Jack Lemmon and uh, Zazu Pitts. <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah, my my. Grandparents started coming here in the 20s, and my mother was born in 1913 and 19, 19 for her sister. They remembered going down in their father's car and parking outside the pavilion and listening to the music come out when the big bands were there in the, in the 30s. Anybody roller skate there? Yeah, I remember Mel Hershaw that passed away within the last year. He used to work at the uh, pavilion for one time and has some stories. In the summer, we used to always come and walk along the dock to look at the boats. Right, that was neat. It was a neat place. Well, that is the end, and I thank you very much for your attention, and we're almost at 8 o'clock. I'll turn the program back over to Eric. Thank, thank you, Chris, and thank you, Jack, uh, out of town for putting all that together, calling 
for selecting all of those photographs. Some interesting ones for sure that give some unique views. So thank you for that. Uh, any any general comments or reflections after looking at those or, or questions for Chris or the rest of us uh, that this might have prompted for you? Chris, is that picture of the theater or, or where the out theater is in your collection online? Oh. Is a picture of the th outdoor theater online somewhere in your collection? Oh, Chris, I think you're muted. Yeah, the, Lynn, I, I think uh, these are newer uh, a newer batch of history mysteries. I don't think they're included in what has been uh, placed online at the center, which basically were those that appeared in the uh, in the issues of the commercial record starting in 2004. So I think this new one is not online unless it's part of the photo gallery that uh, Dick Hake has placed on the uh, History Center site. Uh, you might go, when in doubt, go to the History Center website, click on the search bar and put in the term you're looking for and it'll bring up articles or other items. I don't know that it'll bring so, so much uh, uh, connection with photographs that might be in the photo directory. You might have to go into the photo blog that Dick Hake put together to see if this photo might be there. But if you're interested in that photo, we can certainly email you a copy if you have an email address and ask Eric. Okay, thank you. Thank Chris. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you all for joining us here this evening. Uh, it's been a really interesting program to look at those photographs. I appreciate all of your participation. Uh, stay tuned. We do have a series of uh, talks continuing. <coughs> How'd you do? We'll have Ken Cutzel speaking about a look back at the town, the 1997 exhibit at the. <coughs> First look at uh, the history of art in Saugatuck and Douglas. And Mary Jo Mansky will be joining us uh, at the very end of the month for an art demonstration program uh, in the Back in Time Garden. So I hope you'll be able to join us for those. Check our website, calendar, and uh, our social media, Facebook, for the most recent updates of what programs we have to come. And of course, the, uh, the press releases, the articles that you see in the commercial record. Uh, that uh, John Peters does a great job of, of working through for us, keeping us all informed. So uh, with that, um, I'll stick around the room here if you have questions or comments, but uh, have a wonderful evening and thanks for joining us here online. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks. <laughs>